Okay, so I want to begin our discussion now about horizontal curves. The first thing I want you to take note of is just the, uh, the name of it, horizontal curve. Well, it's got a horizontal in it, so what does that mean? Well, it means that uh, we will be working in the horizontal planes. So if you take this uh, example right here, you know, you've seen this before, but here's some possible and potential referenced horizontal planes. So if these are your planes right here, the only curves that you'll ever find of a horizontal curve will be with inside here. You know, given a certain radius and then given a curve inside there. So this is what we're going to be dealing with. Horizontal curves are in the horizontal plane. Okay, you've seen, you know, and you've driven horizontal curves, you've uh, experienced them, everything like that. It's just a matter of now of, of putting in practice and understanding how it's designed and everything. You know, so down uh, windy streets, you guys have all seen this, and these are where horizontal curves are used for. Um, and the big thing, too, make sure we keep in mind is what it's doing is connecting two straight tangent sections by a curve. That's what you're trying to do. Okay, so where do we use these things? Where have you seen this before? Well, you've seen them in routes, just like the, I just showed you for highways or anything like that. Uh, railroads are also used. Roads are special. They use spiral curves. Uh, we'll discuss a little bit about the difference here in just a minute. Uh, and pipelines. You have straight sections of pipelines. You've got to connect by, uh, by big, large, uh, large curves. So anything we do, whether it's transportation or construction, we're dealing with horizontal curves. Now, as we talk about, I want, I want to just briefly talk about each of the different types of curves that we have. Simple curve is what we're going to deal with the most. That's where you have two straight tangent sections, and you're connected by one curve. That's a simple curve, and that's what we're going to be dealing with mostly, and that's what you'll find out uh, how designs are generally created. Okay, a compound curve, then, is that uh, you, you're still trying to connect two tangent sections over here, but the difference here is, is you've had two curves now. So you have this curve and this curve now where they're joining together. See, before with a simple curve, all you had was one curve joining in the two tangent sections. So there's a compound curve. Okay, a tangent or a broken back curve is where you're now going to be taking, you have a, a short tangent between two of the curves. Um, is uh, you know is shown right here. So again, we're not going to be dealing with those very much any either. Now, reverse curve, that is where you've got uh, the curves. So the uh, the curvature of it are on opposite sides of your highway or your reference line or your pipeline or whatever it may be that you're dealing with. Now, the one thing I want to make sure uh, we understand here that these two right here, they're typically not suitable for highway speeds or for uh, rapid transit or anything else like that. That, that, uh, that's why, you know, we, we avoid those as much as possible. Now when you get into mountainous terrain, you get into certain other areas where there's, there really is no choice. The speed is reduced and you can utilize these, uh, these type of curves. But uh, modern highway speeds, highway like really fast speeds, you're dealing more here using simple curves and also some other, uh, some other variations along that. Okay, the other one I just told you about is we have spiral curves. Spiral curves are real special. What they do is they start out with a radius at infinity, large. Basically, it means that you're, you're basically going on a straight line. Okay, the idea now is, is that every time you move, the radius continues to decrease. And what that does is it creates a, you know, a, an, a smoother junction, a smoother transition from a, a, uh, a tangent into a circular curve or um, into uh, in, as you reach another, another tangent, whatever it may be. Um, these, these are the types of curves that you're going to find with, uh, with railroads, with, um, with train tracks. And the reason you're going to find that is because if you've got a train, the train's coming right down here and it goes instantly into a curve, you know what's going to happen? The momentum and the speed is going to take it right off the track. So the reason they have these spiral curves then is you're going down here, and it gradually eases you into the curve slowly, little by little, which allows an easier transition. You know, when in highways at modern speeds or using cars, we don't worry about as much using spiral curves because we're more agile. The, the car can stop a lot quicker. It can adjust a lot quicker. 
and react a lot quicker to what a train can. <clears throat> so anyway, so we have different types of spirals here, but we're not going to, to be honest with you, we're not going to get into this. We're going to stick with just the, uh, 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 with our calculation, we're going to be dealing with more along the lines of a simple curve. Now another type of curve is uh, going along the horizontals where we have super elevations. You know, we've, uh, we've seen those. Luckily, we don't drive on anything like this. It'll sure be a lot of fun. Um, but anyways, all that is is just raising the outer, outer rail of either a track or edge of the highway pavement, right? It's to reduce the centrifugal force, centrifugal force, uh, uh, you know, as, as you're going around the curve. But again, we're not going to deal much with that, um, that as well. <clears throat> There's two types of definitions I want to give you as we talk about the uh, curves. We have what's called a degree of curve. And two definitions are one going to be by arc definition, the second is going to be by chord definition. So if you look right here, this is what we're talking about. The degree of curve is measured in such that uh, if I went 100 feet along a curve, and again, this could be a curve of, of any size radius. We're not, uh, we're not just talking a small radius or a medium-sized radius or anything like that. What we're talking about is um, just the relationship that we're going to have right here. Okay, so if, I've got, if I go 100 feet along the curve, so start here and I go along the curve right here, what is the degree of curve? What is my, uh, what angle have I subtended? That's what we're trying to figure out, and that's what we're trying to relate. So here's our relationship. This is our, this is our ratio that we have right here. See, we have D over 360 degrees. So if you take a circle, I carve out a little piece right here, all we're doing is creating a ratio. If this is degree, you know, my degree of curve right there, if this was 100 feet going along there, what I'm doing is creating a ratio of what that is, you know, according to the whole rest of the circle itself. So there's D over 360. Now we know there's two ways to define, um, you know, going around a circle. One is in, is in uh, over 360 degrees. The other one would be is uh, what does 2 pi r look like? Isn't 2 pi r circumference is equal to 2 pi r? Okay, so we also want to then see that if we're relating d to 360 degrees, we also want to relate 100 feet to what the total circumference is going around there. So that's what we're relating right here. 100 over 2 pi r is equal to d over 360 degrees. Now the reason this turns into a ratio, because this is in feet, we're dealing with, uh, with feet in this arc definition right here, if you have degree over degree, it cancels. You have feet over feet, it also cancels. So what that turns into is just a straight up just a, a, a ratio. So then what we can do is we can solve for either the D, your degree of curve, or you can solve for R. In this case right here, we're going to write it out here, where uh, this will be your general formula you're going to look like, to solve for radius. Uh, and this is just reducing these equations here. You get 5729.58 over D. Now, when we do these calculations, make sure you take them just as, as is. We're not converting D into radians or anything like that. D is going to be used as um, degrees. Uh, in this instance right here, you'll have to calculate, calculate this into decimal degrees uh, to be able to do that. And then you end up right there with, uh, with the radius. Okay, chord definition, it's the same similar concept. This time we're just talking about what the chord is from one point over to here and the chord length of 100 feet. Now we're not going to use this very much, and uh, it's just another way to do uh, any type of construction staking or to figure out locations on the ground. But uh, for us, we're going to we're going to mostly deal with uh, with this. Now I'll also give you some examples here, and I may ask you a question on an exam or a quiz using the chord definition, which is fine. You should be familiar with it. But for the most part, we're going to be dealing with the arc definition. So if I gave you an example right here, if I gave you say that we had a radius curve of 700 meters, what is the degree of curve? All right, so here's your equation, here's your ratio, just what I told you, all right? So this is what we're looking for is degree of curve. And I gave you what the, uh, what the radius was. All right, so what we need to do is this. Okay, um, in, in this instance here, now remember this was the foot definition, I told, but we're using, we're using meters. I told you it's in 700 meters right there. So what do we need to do? Well, we need to calculate R, the radius of 700 meters, and put that into feet. Now, for simplicity right here, I'm using just a real general rough uh, calculation just to, just to get you through the, uh, the calculation real simply here. So this is, again, this is approximation. This is not exact. This is not an exact uh, conversion as we've done earlier. Uh, but as you take this approximation right here, 
then what you end up then, you solve them for D. Now when you do this, you get this in decimal degrees, and then you convert that into degrees, minutes, seconds. Two degrees, 29 minutes, 41 seconds. All right, so let's, uh, let's do that with the chord definition now and see what, uh, see what we end up with the degree of curve. So if I take our uh, equation that we had, r is equal to 50 over the sine of d over 2. Again, d is the degree of curve. All right, plug in the information that you do have. Okay, what are we looking for? We're looking for d, so let's solve for d. Go back, and then uh, this is the equation you end up now with what d is. Plug in all the information, we end up with the same, which we should. So that way we know everything, you know, everything is right and uh, we, did it, uh, we did it properly on this, uh, on this example right here. So again, as we're talking about degree of curve, that's what we're referencing. We're just talking, it's, a, it's one way or another. When you're given some sort of definition and you're talking about uh, any sort of design work, you're going to give the design in one of two ways. You're going to tell them what the radius is or you can tell them what the degree of curve is. Because based upon the ratio that we have here with the chord, or go back to the, uh, um, you know, if we had D over 360, 100 over 2 pi R. Okay, so whether you're using the chord definition or the arc definition, if I gave you 1, I've now defined that arc. And you can now calculate and go and calculate the degree of curve. Or if I gave you the degree of curve, you can easily go and calculate the radius. So either way, when you're dealing with your design, that's what you're going to be running into.